Welcome, my friends, this day to a time set apart in our busy schedules to glorify Christ. And as we come together making this intentional time, it spills over into the rest of our weeks as we become formed through our Savior. Friends, would you join me as we come together this day, welcoming one and all to this time of worship. Christ has broken down the wall, the wall that divides, the wall between Jew and Greek, the wall upheld by hostility. Let us not rebuild what Christ has broken down. Amen and amen. Friends, let us offer our hymn this morning as a prayer that we do see others with the eyes of Christ. Will you join me as we sing and proclaim together, open my eyes that I may see. Open my eyes that I may see glimpses of truth thou hast for me. Place in my hand the wonderful key that shall unclasp and set me free. Silently now I wait for thee. Ready, my God, thy will to see. Open my eyes, illumine me. Spirit divine, open my ears that I may hear voices of truth thou sendest clear. And while the wave notes fall on my ear, everything false will disappear. Silently now I wait for thee, ready my God thy will to see. Would you pray with me? Lord Jesus, we do come this day with a spirit of openness, seeking, O oh Lord, to hear and see and receive in our heart your message of truth and grace. Lord Jesus, let that message take root in us in such a way that it bears much fruit. That, O oh Lord, it sets us apart from the way of the world in how we live and how we treat other people. Lord Jesus, use this soil of worship as fertile ground in our lives. We are open to you this day. It is in your name that we live and move and have our being. And all God's people said, Amen. Friends, we're going to continue on this day studying the letter to the Ephesians. Today, we're going to move in to the second chapter, and it talks about that which we've made in our own minds and our own worlds that separates us, those things that we've created that Christ never intended. So friends, if there has ever been something spoken or unspoken, 
in your mind or in your world that has separated you from another one of God's children, would you bring it to the Lord in prayer this day? And we pray together saying, oh God, we confess that we cling to who we were before we came to know your love and grace. We keep the, up the divisions of old, looking for them to define us, not our relationship to you. We look to the world to label whom we belong with when you invite us into a new relationship with you and with your people. Forgive us, O oh Lord. Enable us to set aside the ways of the past and step fully into our identity in you. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I invite you to hear the good news of the gospel, which is this. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Thanks be to God. And now, my friends, as those who have been reconciled with our God, let us proclaim together our faith using the Apostles' Creed. And we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Friends, let us come together before God's word and hear this ancient prayer, a prayer found in Psalm 89, starting in verse 20. I have found my servant David, with my holy oil, I have anointed him. My hand should always remain with him. My arm shall also strengthen him. The enemy shall not outwit him. The wicked shall not humble him. I will crush his foes before him and strike down those who hate him. My faithfulness and steadfast love shall be with him. And in my name, his horn shall be exalted. I will set his hand in the sea and his right hand in the rivers. He shall cry out to me, you are my father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. I will make him the firstborn, the highest of the kings of the earth. Forever, I will keep my steadfast love on him and my covenant with him will stand firm. I will establish his line forever and his throne as long as the heavens endure. If his children forsake my law and do not walk according to my ordinances, if they violate my statues and do not keep my commandments, then I will punish their transgressions with the rod and their iniquity with a succorge. I will not remove him from my steadfast love or be false in my faithfulness. I will not violate my covenant nor alter the word that went forth from my lips. Once and for all, I have sworn by my holiness, I will not lie to David. His line shall continue forever and his throne endure before me like the sun. It shall be established forever like the moon, an enduring witness in the skies. Amen and amen.
As we come to our children's message today, I remind us that we are all children of God, so this message is for every single one of us. And I do have a question. How many of you have a sibling, a brother or a sister? Lots of us do, right? And if you don't have a brother or sister, that's okay. I want you to think about your best friend. Do you always share things well with your brother or sister? I didn't always do that well when I was younger. I would say, that's mine. Have you ever said that? We want things that we can keep to ourselves. And, and sometimes we go as far as dividing a room, right? Have you ever seen someone do that? Building a, a way to separate it, maybe using tape, maybe building something else, but to say, you stay on that side. That's yours. Do you think that's how Christ would want us to treat one another? No. But that doesn't mean it's always easy to share, right? Or it's always easy not to have that line that divides things up between mine and yours. And yet, we're going to hear this scripture day that talks just about that. That talks about how Christ sees us and how we come together and we're better together. Now, I know that's not always easy, but next time you really, really, really don't want to share, think about why. Why? And what could you do instead? Let's pray. Lord Jesus, you teach us beautiful but hard lessons Sundays, Lord, and one of those lessons is about sharing and not dividing up, but instead coming together and being with one another because we can do more together than we can do apart. Lord Jesus, we know that's a hard lesson to learn when we have toys we don't want to share, and it seems to be an even harder lesson when we're adults. And so, Lord, use your word to speak to our hearts, and then give us opportunities to live into it. In your name we pray. Amen. Friends, we are continuing on in the letter to the Ephesians today, which is found in the New Testament. We're going to start together in chapter 2 in verse 11. Ephesians chapter 2, starting in verse 11. I invite you to hear and receive this word from the Lord. So then, remember that at one time you were Gentiles by birth, called the uncircumcision by those who are called the circumcision, a physical circumcision made in the flesh by human hands. Remember that you were at the time without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenant of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now, in Christ Jesus, you who were once far from him are brought near by the blood of Christ, for he is our peace. In his flesh, he has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall. That is the hostility between us. He has abolished the law with its commandments and ordinances that he might create in himself one new humanity in place of the two, thus making peace and might reconcile both groups to God in one body through the cross, thus putting to death the hostility through it. So he came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off, and peace to those who were near. For through him, both of us have access to the one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundations of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. 
In him, the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you are also built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. Friends, this is the word of God for the people of God. Praise be to God. Shall we pray? Lord Jesus, as we continue to wrestle with this letter to the Ephesians penned so long ago, we know that there is a truth for in it for us here and now today. So we ask, O oh Lord, that you speak to us, that, O oh Lord, your word touch us in ways that we need, and Lord, that it would lead the way we live our lives. We ask this for the sake of your name and your kingdom. Amen. In seminary, one of my absolute favorite songs to sing was an original work by our songwriter, our chapel musician, Mark Miller, who just has such a gift for taking scripture and putting it into contemporary terms and making it come alive anew. The name of that song that I loved was Christ Has Broken Down the Wall. And it went like this, Christ has broken down the wall. Christ has broken down the wall. Let us join our hearts as one. Christ has broken down the wall. That hymn has been playing through my mind all week, friends, as I've been reading this text of the letter to the Ephesians. Paul is writing to a Gentile church that's being told that they aren't good enough, that their faith isn't enough because they aren't Jewish. So Paul comes in, he needs to, to set a few things straight, chiefly that there's no longer any distinction between Jew and Greek because everything has changed in Jesus Christ. Paul needs to direct this part of his letter in particular to the Gentiles because for so long they've been called the uncircumcision or we would have said the uncircumcised. Now, to our modern ears, that may just seem like a fact. Jews were circumcised and Gentiles, Greeks, they were not. But it was actually a slang term that was used by Jewish people when referring to Gentiles, that means pagan. Paul is calling out that slang term and its meaning out and saying, yes, yes, Gentiles were once far from God, but that isn't who they are anymore because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, friends, how often do we get caught in that trap? We refuse to see people as they truly are. We only see them as they once were. When we are in this place where we say hurtful things and act in damaging ways because we have an image, a word, a phrase stuck in our head. And when we're in that place, friends, we can cause so much pain. Case in point. Paul needs to write this section of the letter at all, reminding the Gentiles who they truly are, that they are not what everyone else says about them. When I was in seminary, I was blessed to be able to take a class inside of a state correctional facility. And the class is part of this pilot program to bring religious education to men and women on the inside. However, all of us that were in this pilot program, there were a few rules, two to be precise. One, we were not to refer to the men and women on the inside as prisoners. Instead, we referred them uh, to them as inside students and we were outside students. And second, we couldn't ask anyone point blank what they were charged with. Now, if an inside student wanted to share that with us as we gained trust and as conversation went on, that was allowed. But we as outside students weren't allowed to ask. Now, normally you may say, Michelle, those seem like some really odd rules. 
And yet they had a purpose. The purpose was to get to know our classmates, like we would get to know our classmates in any other setting. And friends, it was transformative. These rules helped us shift our mindset to not label these men and women based off of crimes, but instead to see them through the blood of Jesus Christ. And while that particular example may seem very extreme, I think we continue to put people in boxes, place labels on them in our everyday lives as well. Have you ever heard of these things called cardboard testimonies? I've been able to participate with those uh, a few different times, and essentially you take a piece of, of cardboard, think about the flat piece of a pizza box, and on one side you write what you have heard from people in the world, how they define you, and then on the other side you flip it around and you say who you are in Christ. I've done this in various setting friends and every single time it brings me to tears because there these are truly things that people have heard said about them and that they have found transformed in Jesus Christ as they discover more fully who they are the Jews were participating in this type of exercise, they would say that, well, no, that, that front of the pizza box, that front of the testimony, that is true. They would say that, yes, the Gentiles are uncircumcised, but I think the invitation for them and for us when we insist on that is to ask why. And often when we clear out all the, the things of the world, we realize that we keep insisting on labeling people because it makes us feel better. It becomes a mark of pride similar to, well, at least we aren't like them. At least we aren't like those Gentiles. But that isn't what God ever intended the covenant to do, to divide one group of people from another. So Christ had to come and bring a new life entirely, including this new way to be in relationship with God and new way to citizenship in the kingdom of heaven. If this was the Cardmore testimony time, the folks in this passage may say on one side, uncircumcised, and then on the other side, child of God. The words of Christ has broken down the wall. We are accepted as we are. Through God's love, all is reconciled. We're accepted as we are. Friends, that's something that only Christ alone could do. Jesus is the only one who could take these two groups of folk who were hostile towards one another in opposition and bring peace. Have you ever been part of a mediation process? For years, I was a peer mediator, and then I took classes on how to bring that approach to churches. But I'll tell you this, mediation will always fail if people cannot arrive at common ground. And for friends, for those of us who put our hope, our trust in Jesus Christ, Christ is our common ground. He is what draws us together. He is the source of peace. But even when we say that with our lips, are we living that out with our lives? I think often instead we put up all these walls that divide us. Now, one of those walls is sin. And when I say that, folk often think, well, yes, of course, the sin that someone has committed against me, the sin of those people, that created the wall. But brothers and sisters, the truth is that we also sin against other people, probably a lot more than we realize, or at least a lot more than we would like to admit. Sometimes we may actually intentionally hurt another person. And other times we may sin against them and not even realize what we have done. But that sin still divides us from other people, people whom God has created 
and whom God loves. Another wall that we throw up is tradition. That is a big one for the Ephesians. Folk are coming to tell them that according to tradition, they can't be part of this covenant because they aren't circumcised. The tradition of circumcision was actually blocking the truth of the gospel. Now hear me out. Tradition is not a bad thing, but we need to be humble enough to not allow it to block us from the new thing God is doing. Both tradition and the new thing are spoken about in this particular scripture, and we are not to pit one against the other, especially because we're always going to prefer one, and we're going to think that our preference is superior. In those instances, tradition can become a wall that divides our hearts and lives. Third wall is the law. Now, rules are not bad things, brothers and sisters, but when we care more about the rule or the law than about the author of the law, then that's a different story. We become people who stray. And Paul reminds us that we can never, ever be saved by the law. In fact, all who seek the salvation through following the rule of the law, they're going to be disappointed for they are incapable of keeping the law. It's just who we are in our sinful selves. We can't do it alone. We are in need of one to come forth and bring about a new way. And friends, that new way came through Jesus Christ, who came to knock down the walls. Jesus took those walls that ever divide us and instead invites us to come to a way of understanding where he is the cornerstone, the foundation of our faith. Now, you may say to me, Michelle, that sounds a whole lot like a wall. What's the difference? Well, walls divide and foundations give us a firm place to stand. The cornerstone marks and holds together instead of becoming a stumbling block. In this way, Jesus Christ is the pioneer and perfecter of our faith and the one who reconciles us to God and each other. If we take this teaching to be true, that Christ comes not to divide as the world divides, but to bring us together as members in the family of God, then the invitation, the question is, how are we to change? How can we step aside from our behavior that brings harm and be people who point to the abundant life in Christ? It's not just about building walls, friends. It's repenting of the hostility that caused us to build them in the first place. Here's the thing. You may not like everyone in the family of God, but someday that believer that you like the least is going to be standing beside you praising God in glory. So let us make the kingdom of God that is to come be made to known in the kingdom of God that is already here amongst us and how we speak about and how we treat one another. I think this becomes markably easier when we take time to examine our hearts and speech. When we take time to remember when we too were once far from God and how Christ has changed us. We wouldn't want to be held captive by who we once were. So why would we want to put that on anyone else? And once we realize that in our own lives, we ask God to give us the peace of Christ in our speech. Now, the peace of Christ is not just a nice greeting. It's the peace that unifies us under the lordship of Jesus. In my own life, that means praying that God helps me see people how God sees them. I have hundreds of colleagues within this annual conference. Now, I by no means know everyone personally, but it is my desire of my heart to be able to speak something true and positive and affirming about each and every person and their ministry that I do know. That doesn't mean that I always agree with them or that I don't get frustrated, but it reminds me that they have a purpose in the kingdom of God, which helps me keep my heart 
in check. We live in a world, brothers and sisters, that's all about dividing people up. It's all about putting up walls. But in the words of Mark Miller, Miller as the children of God, we are to tear down every wall because Christ has broken down the wall. Amen. Friends, as we come now to a time of prayer, I will tell you that prayer is one of the things that can just open up our hearts because we pray for those we know, and we pray for those we don't know. We pray for those that we like, but we also pray for those that we struggle with. And so my friends, if you have anything to share in prayer this day, I'd invite you to bring it to this time. If you're joining us live, know you can throw it on down in the chat and, and we will continue to be in prayer. If we are not joining us live or something that you don't feel like you can post publicly, know you can reach out to me and I would love to be in prayer with you. Friends, shall we pray? Lord Jesus, we admit that we like the sentiment of this passage, but when it calls us to break down that which we have thrown up as divisions in our own lives, Lord, we find it much more challenging. And yet, O oh Lord, we know that that is a work that we cannot do on our own, but it is a work that can only happen in you. And so, Lord, we ask that you be with us. We ask, O oh Lord, that you speak to our hearts. And we ask, O oh Lord, that you lead us in this time of prayer to pray for those, O oh Lord, you want us to lift up before your throne of grace. Lord, this day we pray for those that are hurting, for those that are grieving. We pray, O oh Lord, that you give them comfort beyond all comfort of this world. Lord, we pray for those who are in need of a healing touch and don't know where to turn. We pray, O oh Lord, that they can feel the power of your spirit with them. We pray, O oh Lord, for those who are tasked with making really hard decisions. We pray, O oh Lord, that they not lean on their own understanding, but that they turn you to you for wisdom. And Lord, we pray for all that divides us in this world that you unite our hearts as one in you, O oh Lord, and that you become the foundation upon which we truly stand. Lord, we pray all these things in the power of your name as we come together as those who seek to follow you, who seek to make your name known, as we pray together saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, as we come together, we offer our whole selves to God. We offer our mind, we offer our soul, we offer our strength, we offer our daily lives. And so my friends, will you join me as we pray together with all that we offer in mind, dedicating it to the Lord as we pray. God of abundance, take what we present to you this day and multiply it, not for our sake, but for your glory. Use what we have all for your name. Amen. Friends, let us continue our time of worshiping Lord, the Lord together as we sing our closing hymn, Where He Leads Me. I can hear my sing. Calling, I can hear my Savior calling. I can hear my Savior calling. Take thy cross and follow, follow me. Where we Where he leads me, 
him, with him, all the way. I'll go with him through the garden. I'll go with him through the garden. I'll go with him through the garden. I'll go with him, with him. Friends, before we are sent off with a blessing into the rest of our day and the rest of our week, I do have some announcements for you. The big one is that Grace's Council will meet on Monday at 7 p.m. and that all are welcome to that meeting. Friends, I invite you now to receive this blessing, a blessing directly from Scripture as I send you forth. But now in Christ Jesus, who you who were once far from God have been brought near by the blood of Christ. Friends, let us go forth with this message. Let us not label as the world labels. Let us not see as the world sees. Let us not divide as the world divides. But let us be reconciled together in our Lord and Savior. Amen and amen.